Yeah, I got to gotta let Nick talk about his guy since I talked about mine. Yeah, that's fine. All right, cool. We're good. He has dropped my board a little bit. Well, there's been some changes since I started doing grades. That's certainly yeah. Yes. yeah, same, same. I've had a lot of changes. Welcome to another episode of Boom or Bust, the draft show. Max Chadwick alongside Nick Miriam and Donnie Clemens. So another scouting report video and another quarterback scouting report video. We did Kenny Pickett. Now we're doing Matt Corral, the Ole Miss quarterback. Nick's guy, Tate's guy, who unfortunately couldn't be with us in this episode, but he loves him. Going to go over his strengths, weaknesses, player comp, ranking, team fit, so much more. Before we start the video, please like and subscribe to the channel hit that notification as well we're dropping scattering reports all the time right now and of course be sure to follow our twitter instagram tiktok at boom or bus draft also follow all of us on those platforms too at chat underscore max for me at nicholas sports for nick and at pick and spreads for donnie who's also on tiktok as well of course follow him on tiktok like i said before we're on youtube anywhere you get your podcast make sure you guys like and subscribe here Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever, and of course, check out the merch store below. So let's get to Matt Corral. He's a redshirt junior, six foot two, 205 pounds, former four star recruit, number 63 overall, number seven quarterback in the class of 2018, coming out of California. In 13 games this year, he completed 68% of his passes for 3,343 yards, 20 touchdowns, and five interceptions. He also ran for 614 yards and 11 touchdowns. And in his career, he completed 67% of his passes for 8,281 yards, 57 touchdowns, 23 picks, and he ran for 1,338 yards and 18 touchdowns. So Nick, when you watch Corral, what do you like the most? Well, it's a little combination of decision-making and just quick twitch at the quarterback position. So I know he runs an offense where they're asking him to get the ball out quick and distribute as quick as he can, but I think outside of the quick game stuff they have him do, it's the same with the progressions they have him go through that are a little more complex. He is very, very good at finding the open receiver, getting his feet set, and quickly releasing that ball. And he's got a pretty good arm and getting the ball out to the receiver. Um, And I think in terms of his accuracy within 20 yards, he is almost entirely consistent in fitting in throws that are more impressive than a lot of quarterbacks you see in this draft class. Uh, besides that, I think he is a pretty good athlete. He's a little undersized. I don't really worry about that as much, but I think he is above average running ability. He's scrappy. Uh, there's a little inconsistency with him outside of uh, the structure that's been built at Ole Miss, but sometimes you see him do some like unreal things outside of the pocket, getting you know his feet set, throwing downfield. We saw a couple throws like that against Alabama when he just Really had a tough game, I think, and then had to just create in his own and unfortunately suffered some bad drops from his receivers throughout the season. But also, I think outside of that athleticism, that baseline of delivery, his arm talent is really, really good for a guy his size. I mean, you can see him changing his arm angles. You see him throwing rocket balls. You see him throwing the ball downfield with touch. He, I think, in terms of a complement of the type of throws he can make, I don't know that he has the strongest arm in this class, but I think the types of throws he can make, he has the most in his arsenal of any quarterback in this draft class. Um, yeah, and also real quick, I just want to comment this since um, I'm relatively newer to the show. I do want to say this when I'm scouting quarterbacks. I'm never going to take size that much into consideration because one of my favorite prospects of all time is Kyler Murray, and he's like five foot two. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge quarterback heights when, well, that's even my quarterback too. So I'm the last person who should be talking about height for quarterback, but yeah, like, uh, like Nick said, he's got good arm strength. I wouldn't say it's elite arm strength, but it's good, very solid arm strength. And like Nick said, he is light out from 20 to from 20 yards to like the short to intermediate. Like he is a light out and when he gets into rhythm he gets into rhythm and you cannot stop him and it showed and he showed that during the first few games with Ole Miss at the beginning of the year and then eventually he kind of started slowing down a little bit but it's I, I'm not going to blame him for that much because his offense is really not that good and that's another comp I have and no one's talking about it and people are always saying and we'll get to this weakness later but people are always saying oh he plays in an RPO offense but what people don't understand is every year when he lost his best weapons he got better when he mm-hmm. lost DK Metcalf and AJ Brown he got better 
And then when he lost Elijah Moore, he had his best season yet, which is something you really, really, really need to take into consideration because Elijah Moore was one of the most dominant slot wide receivers we have seen over the last few years when he was at Ole Miss. And then he went to the NFL and Corral had his best season yet, which I think is huge. Um, another positive I have is that he's a really, really tough runner. Like, mm -hmm. even though I don't necessarily love that because I don't want my quarterbacks to get hurt, and that is one of the weaknesses because he's going to get hurt in that bowl game. I don't want to see my quarterback get hurt, but he is a tough runner, and with that comes leadership. One of the be He is one of the best leaders I've seen because for him to want to play in that bowl game, that showed me everything, man. Like, it shows he's a good leader. He cares about his teammates. He cares about the team, and I love that. So, tough runner, great athlete, good arm, and that's um, just echoing everything else Nick said. Yeah, and I think the leadership thing, like, yeah, that bowl game thing was great. Like, we're, obviously, we're not saying anyone who opted out of the bowl game is a bad leader. By yes, no, 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 no. Yeah, absolutely not. Because, obviously, every, every kid's situation is different. So, yeah, but, I mean, you saw that, you know, when they asked him, they're like, hey, Matt, you know, Kenny Pickett's opting out of the bowl game. So many other prospects are opting out of their bowl game. You're also one of the top prospects. Like, what's your decision? And he was like, F that. Like, I'm playing in the bowl game. I want to finish out the season. Which, there's something to be said for that. You know, like, there is, obviously, we're not discrediting any other prospect who opted out. But there's something to be said for a guy saying, no, I'm, this is a great season for our school. And I want to finish it out with them. Um, so, yeah, I agree. He's a very, very good leader. And I, I love the way he plays, too. Uh, great athlete. You guys mentioned that before. True dual threat quarterback. Good, not great arm strength, like you guys mentioned that too, where it's not like this elite, elite arm talent, but it is really good, especially for his size. Uh, his throwing motion, I think, really generates a lot of torque, which allows him to absolutely launch balls. Um, he's able to escape and make plays on his own. He showed he was a legit runner this year, like a very good runner this season. And I think his decision-making took a huge step forward last year. We'll get into the weaknesses a little bit later, but last year he was forcing a lot of throws. This year, not really at all. Like, he really took a major step forward in that aspect. I think his timing also improved. He's above average accuracy. Beautiful downfield throws on tape. And I think he plays pretty under control. And he always seems to throw with a consistent base. And Donnie, you mentioned this. I'm glad you did. This, you mentioned, like, you lost DK Metcalf, you lost A.J. Brown, you lost Elijah Moore, and he just kept getting better. Whereas Sam Howell, when you say, okay, you lost Javante Williams, you lost Michael Carter, Diami Brown, and Daz Newsome, you get better? Not really. I mean, Sam Howell got really good as a runner, but as a passer, like, you could say, yeah, he took kind of a step back for this year. Matt Corral never really did that. But, Donnie, what are the weaknesses that you see with Matt Corral? Well, this is one of the most common things that I hear every single time I'm talking about this guy on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, anything. He plays in an RPO offense, which mm -hmm. I really don't view as a complete and true, like, bad negative. Because, one, it's not really necessarily his fault. And, two, it means that you have to make quick decisions. And, yes, his wide receivers are open the majority of the time when it comes to those um, small to intermediate routes because of the RPO offense. But he still makes good reads. He knows what his guy is going to be open which once again that could be a part of it but i think something that makes up for it like me and max said when he lost his best weapons he got better and even though you're in an rpo offense and it does advance your wide receiver play name me one elite wide receiver that matt Crow had this year his best weapon was a running back like, give me a break. So <laughs> that's kind of it. He plays in an RPO offense, which is something to be. I know I'm kind of like just kind of like putting like just sprinkles on him. Be like, yeah, it's not the bigger deal. It is a little bit of a concern because how is he going to do in a normal pro or spread offense in the NFL? Um, also, I think his deep ball accuracy at times can be kind of hit or miss. I know his guys really didn't really benefit him that much by catching him. But every now and then he kind of throw him behind, which is something I feel like we kind of underrated with Zach Wilson a little bit. Every now and then he kind of under threw a deep ball a little bit, but we just ignored it because of how great those flashes were with his deep ball. And I think we kind of did the same with Matt Corral, except not to the extreme of Zach Wilson. Also, something I kind of mentioned, he never slides. And it's really, really concerning. And he, and like I said earlier, he got injured in the bowl game against um, Baylor, right? It was Baylor. Yes. Yep. Yes, Baylor. He got injured on, I believe it was the second drive of the bowl game. And thankfully, thankfully, it wasn't that bad of an injury. It was only an ankle, it was only an ankle sprain, which that is, that was what I was hoping for. And I know that sounds bad, but like it could have been so, like yeah, from what I bad. saw, it looked bad. I mean, he was like in pain. You could tell in his face. And I was just sitting here, just please be an ankle sprain, please be an ankle sprain. And it was, and it wasn't even a high ankle sprain. It was just a normal ankle sprain, which is great. So um, that sounds horrible, but you understand what I, you understand what I, <laughs> I know. We got it. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
those are those are the two weaknesses. He plays in an RPO offense, which could be a bit concerning about his decision making and how will he be in a normal spread offense. Um, also, his deep ball accuracy times can be kind of hit or miss, and he never slides, which I want my quarterbacks to slide because I just I just don't trust you constantly getting hit. And that was one of my big weaknesses with like Trey Lance from Mooks, for example, from last year. Yeah. Um. So I I'm, I didn't go very like big into the strengths of this, this part of the video because I kind of have a couple of things in the weaknesses department that I'd like to refute really quickly, which are first the RPO offense thing, which I think, yes, the base of that offense is RPOs. But I think there's enough on tape of him in a kind of spread style offense, enough progression based stuff, uh, throwing the ball downfield on tape for him in his two years, his last two years of him playing as well as he has at Ole Miss, that makes me feel like he can operate in an NFL offense. Um I don't know if everyone has that take, but I believe that there's enough there that's advanced enough that I think that the translation of his pre-snap reads and what he's done in the RPOs should help him going into the NFL. And there's a lot of QBs these days who don't have that basis of pre-snap reads in college, and this will help him at least in that department. The second thing that I hear a lot about is the two games last year, one of them against Arkansas where he threw six interceptions and just kind of came out of nowhere. Fine. Like, all right, you throw a bunch of interceptions. Like, Jameis Winston, big interception guy in the NFL – it just means you like throwing the ball downfield. And I'd rather have a QB who'd rather throw the ball down the field than not. Um, and he is certainly a guy who will be a gunslinger. He will take his chances down the field, and they will be there. And I think taking one game, especially just a box score stats of one game, and judging a guy based off of that is absolutely ridiculous. And I see a lot of people doing that with not just Corral, but multiple quarterbacks in this draft class. Um, sometimes wrongly, like you know, I think one thing that's been pointed out is the way Corral has played against Alabama, the way Ritter played against Alabama. I think they both played well in those games. You see a lot of people saying that they didn't. Um, but you have to take into account what's going on around them. Uh, mm-hmm. For example, a throw down field that's a brilliant throw that hits the receiver right in the hands and gets dropped is a great play by the quarterback. And some people, for some reason, still think it's not uh, because it, <laughs> the completion wasn't made. But whatever. So let's move off of that really quick and actually talk about a few weaknesses. Um, I don't know that he doesn't slide because last year, a lot of the time, he did slide. He looked like a guy who played baseball, like quite literally has practiced sliding and knows what he's doing. I think this season – they got him more involved in the run game, and he took it upon himself to take on more physical hits and, t- and get involved in the run game that way, which I do not think can be a part of his game at the NFL level. He needs to get down. He needs to avoid contact. And it worries me because it's inside the pocket, too. He takes bad hits, and I think he doesn't protect himself well enough, um, and it's, it is concerning. Um, another thing that came up for me a lot is that when he does miss – um, and I know there's a saying with JT O'Sullivan that sometimes the hardest throws to make are the wide open downfield throws. Matt Corral misses a lot of layups, like throws that he should not be missing. And it, it kind of, this is something I kind of discovered recently. It's why he's fallen down my board a little bit since we last talked about him on one of our episodes that Max and Donnie always bring him up because I love him. Um, <laughs> he's just, there are throws on tape that it's like, you just can't miss that. And sometimes it's him rushing his footwork. Um, I know there's pressure a lot of the time. He hasn't really figured out how to play under pressure uh, fully at all in this Ole Miss offense. And I'm hoping at the NFL level it, it's not as difficult. But we saw this with Zach Wilson kind of, you know, did not ever have pressure in college and couldn't deal with it at the NFL level. Matt Corral did deal with pressure in Ole Miss and struggled with it. Um, so he needs to figure out how to still go through his mechanics um, at the NFL level when the pressure is even worse. And one more thing, I think. We kind of, the second half of the season, he didn't play as well. His ankles were beat up for the last second half of the year, and that hurts your mechanics. Like, it's really hard to set your feet um, and do that every play because it's tiring when your ankles are already both injured, and that kind of played a part in him getting hurt in Baylor, but it connects back to not protecting himself. He got injured once running downfield. He got injured once in the pocket. Um, It's all kind of encompassed in the way his play style has been in college, and there's going to have to be some changes in the way he plays football if he wants to succeed at the NFL level because of it. And real quick, I do want to say this real quick um, about the Zach Wilson thing that you mentioned about dealing with pressure. Zach Wilson, as the season went on, started to get a little bit better. He showed flashes of being able Mm -hmm. to be okay under pressure, especially towards the end of the season where he was actually starting to look like a legit quarterback because at the beginning of the year, all the rookie quarterbacks were just bad. And I'm not going to blame them all because they were all in terrible, terrible situations. But as the season went on, slowly, 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 Zach Wilson started to get a little bit better. So there's promise that – Matt Corral could do the same thing. Maybe he struggles right away because he goes to a team with a bad offensive line. But he, I have a feeling that if Zach Wilson can learn it, he can too. 
Yeah, so with Corral, I, I will say, so yeah, I agree with Nick that like the offense thing I think is a little bit overblown. However, I do think it is a major thing to talk about because the offense Ole Miss is one of the most college e offenses. I know we're going to get to a Sam Howell video probably pretty soon, and we're going to talk about that for sure. This is another huge negative for the North Carolina offense. But I think the Ole Miss one is really the same. Like Ole Miss was at one of the highest rates in the country with play action, one of the highest rates in the country in RPOs, and one of the highest rates in the country in screens. So this guy was not having these like pro style reps on tape. And when he did, it was okay. Like it wasn't like nearly as good as say what a Bryce Young was showing on tape or even like a Kenny Pickett was really good on tape in those pro style concepts. So I think there is something to be said with, you know, how much is that Ole Miss offense carrying the load and how much of it is Matt Corral. I do think Corral was excellent this year. I'm not taking any way away from that, but I will say that there is something to be said about that offense at Ole Miss. Uh, yeah, the injuries thing scared me. Because I think that Tennessee game was the other one he got hurt into. Um, multiple injuries, the Baylor game as well. And he's only, you know, the size, the height, I don't care about. But sometimes, like, the actual weight I care about. And he's 205 pounds at 6'2", which, good height. The weight is, like, 15 pounds below, though, and below the average. How will he survive as a true dual-threat quarterback? And I agree with Nick. He cannot play like he did at Ole Miss last year. Like, how Ole Miss wanted him as a runner – that cannot fly in the NFL because this guy is going to get destroyed in the NFL if an NFL team makes him run like that. So I think he's a guy who probably you don't want as just a pure like dual threat quarterback. I think he is one, but I think you want more as like, okay, maybe like every now and then we can have him go on a scramble and run downfield or, you know, he can drop back to pass. No one's open. He can take off. That's the kind of quarterback I think I want. I don't want someone like maybe like Lamar Jackson, which is a part of your rushing attack. It's like, oh, this guy is one of our rushers. No, I don't think he is. I think he's, you want him as a real passing quarterback who can take off when need be, or else he's just going to get hurt more. And I'm worried about that. Uh, I agree with Nick. He did not play very well under pressure. Um, he definitely improved this year, but uh, I hate going back to like previous years for negatives because this year was so good for Corral. But there was some horrific decision-making on tape in 2020. And I think that Arkansas game showed it. The LSU game showed it, too. Um, and, you know, those are just a couple games. But there are other games, too, where he has had some really bad decisions on tape. And you're saying to yourself, man, what were you even looking at when you were about to throw that ball? This year, almost completely erased. And I think that was a, such a huge positive for him this year. But it is worth going back to previous years and seeing some negatives. And I think his traits are all kind of, like, good not elite. Like, he doesn't have a superstar arm. He's not a superstar runner. Not extremely accurate. Like, this is a guy who's just very good in a lot of different things, but he's not excellent in anything. So I think the traits are all kind of above average, not elite. But Nick, give me the bottom line of Corral, where he ranks for you, uh, where he ranks in his quarterback class, player comp, team fits. What do you think about Matt Corral? Yeah, so he's my number one quarterback. Um, it has been from the beginning. Um, he's fallen a bit down my board. He's now number 10 overall. I kind of had to drop him after that kind of accuracy thing that I kind of looked at, just kind of went over and examined all these quarterbacks, when they had missed, how they had missed, and I kind of felt that Corral's misses were more egregious than some of the others. So that's – or sorry, out of Corral. Did I say Howell? My bad. Um, <laughs> not, we'll talk about Howell in another video. But um, I think that baseline of the arm talent, kind of the athleticism, uh, the, the quick twitch, uh, decision-making, ability to read a defense, the pre-snap stuff, um, and kind of just overall makeup, just being kind of above average with everything. I know there's a bit of a it's, – it's a little bit of a project with Corral, um, but I, it's not quite like – it's not a Malik Willis type project thing, yeah. right? You know, no, Malik definitely, Willis, definitely. the payoff, the payoff <laughs> with Willis is going to be much better, obviously, if you make it work, because obviously that guy's arm is crazy, and that guy's running ability is crazy, and he's a bigger guy. He's probably going to be more able to play the way that Corral did in today's in, in college. But I think the baseline is higher for Corral, and I think there needs to be changes to the way you structure him at the NFL level. But I think in a Shanahan-style offense, where you're running a lot of motion, you're running a lot of play action, there's a lot of pre-snap stuff for him to take advantage of, um, and you can kind of give him, you know, you know, easy throws throughout the game, but also allow him to kind of create on his own at times. Um, I think in that type of offense, he could be excellent. Um, I don't know that he is going to be perfect in an offense where it's just West Coast, um, where he needs to be making reads every play. Like, I don't think this guy's going to be Tom Brady, obviously. He's not going to be making the perfect decision every play. He's not going to be just, you know, drop back passer you know, hit the right throw every single time. But I think if you want him to be your, 
you know, a better Jimmy Garoppolo, which I think is very likely if he's in that type of system, it's very possible. And so kind of coming back to the Shanahan style offense, my comp, which is one as a Washington fan, I kind of hate making as a guy who I think has above average arm talent. He's not as fast as this guy no. that can get outside the pocket and no. create, and he no. just constantly is taking injuries. I see Robert Griffin the third. And to be quite honest with you, like, it's a little disappointing to me to be coming to that conclusion because I, I do not want to have Robert Griffin on my <laughs> football team again. But let me just say, with subtracting maybe a little bit of the athleticism, the leadership for me, some of the stuff he said in press conferences this year just completely resonated with me um, as a, you know, I'm going to throw out the college athlete, not really card again, but, you know, I do play rugby. Um, a guy who says, you know, I am here because of what the team has accomplished over the course of a season, and it makes no sense for me to walk away now because then they're going to be asking questions for why I walk away, is something that I don't think has been said by any player trying to leave for a draft. And to me, it's something that needed to be said because it shows the reasons, it shows the decision-making that goes into opting out of these bowl games. And Crow explained his reasoning for why he stayed, which I thought was excellent. Um, and I think more athletes need to do that. And the fact that he's able to go up there and and talk about these decisions is is very mature type thing. And I think when he gets to the NFL, there are going to be coaches that fall in love with that. And it makes a guy easy to work with when he's able to just shoot straight like that. So I, I think there's a few things that he has going for him in the NFL. And I, I believe that um, unlike RG3, whatever they ask him to work with in the NFL level, he's going to agree to work with and get better at. <laughs> oh, man, I thought you were going to say someone else. OK, so, yeah, so um, did I. Yeah. So did I. <laughs> Do we have the same? Oh, I hope not. Okay. Um. So overall, I love Matt Crow as a quarterback. He's my QB one. So my board changes every day. Um. Actually, before we um, before we recorded this video a couple hours before, went back and I watched just one more game of him, and he actually dropped a little bit on my big board because of that. I did have him eleven. Now I have him at thirteen QB one. My board changes literally every day. Like I can't. I I, I don't know what to think of this. I don't know what to think of this draft. This is a weird draft. So currently, I will say with confidence, he is my QB one. Um, I think with this draft, you have to view it differently because there isn't a slam dunk, no miss prospect. There isn't, okay, well, this is a bad example, but there isn't a Trevor Lawrence. There isn't a Joe Burrow. There isn't a Kyler Murray. There's none of these guys in this draft who were just so good in college and they are just a can't miss prospect and all of them have been great in the NFL, but there just isn't one in this draft. So in my opinion, I think you have to view this class as who has the highest ceiling, but is more likely to work. So yeah. that's what I'm currently doing because obviously Malik Willis has the highest ceiling, but the odds of him working are, ugh. so yeah. um, that's the thing about Malik. But Crow, I think Crow maybe has the second highest ceiling in this class, and I think he has probably one of the highest chance to work in this draft because I think he has a better arm than Sam Howe. I think he's a more, I think he's more athletic than Sam Howe, and I think he might have better accuracy and decision making than Sam Howe, and I think he might be a bit easier to work with. It's close. I can see a debate. I can definitely see a debate. But in my opinion, I think Crow has a slightly higher ceiling than Sam Howe, which puts him at QB one. Um, my comp. Oh God, Nick. I thought we were going to say the same comp for a second. Uh, my comp for him is just better Taylor Heineke. Uh, I know that sounds a little bit insulting because Taylor Heineke is really not good, but I wanted to stay away from Zach Wilson because I don't think he's as good of an improviser as Zach Wilson. I wanted to stay away from Baker Mayfield because he's a bit like he's a bit taller than Baker, and I think he doesn't really have that raw arm strength because Baker has like I know I know Baker gets a lot of crap from people, but he still has an absolute cannon of an arm. Like, he could probably throw the ball, like, almost 80 yards down the field. And I don't think Crowell has that type of arm strength. So I'm just going to go with better Taylor Heineke. Um, have questions about both of their decision making. Their accuracy at times can be kind of hit or miss. Uh, both very good runners, except Heineke does know how to get down. And I think Matt Crowell will learn that relatively quick. Or maybe he'll learn it in the offseason. Like, who really knows? So my comp frame is going to be Taylor Heineke. And I was stressed for a second when he was saying Washington quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't Tom Brady, Donnie. Um, so <laughs> yes, he's gonna be the goat. He will be the goat. <laughs> Brady's about to retire. Reports are saying Matt Crow will take over his spot on Tampa. <laughs> um, all right. So for me, I have him 14 overall. Dropped him a little bit. Might move up my board, honestly. Like with Donnie, like I am moving my board constantly. So whatever I'm saying right now, do not lock that in at all. But what you can lock in is that he probably is gonna be my QB two in this draft behind Sam Howell, who we'll get to. In another video, I love Howell. Um, I actually might disagree with you, Don. I think Howell might have a higher ceiling 
than Matt Corral. I think he might have a stronger arm, and I think he's he's you know bigger and he is a really good runner as well. I think Sam Howell might have a higher ceiling than Matt Corral, and I think he's been very good for three years now. Um, which you can't really say for Corral. Corral's been good, good, and then really awesome this year. Um, but Corral, look, Corral's tape looks great. There are serious concerns over how much is him versus how much is Lane Kiffin in that scheme, which you can say for Sam Howell as well. Um, but still, he played extremely well in the SEC, has good enough traits that he's worth a look in the first round. Now, the question is, how high are you willing to take him in the first round? I'd probably say in the top half of the first round is where I'm willing to take a flyer on this guy. The comp, I know, Donnie, you didn't love this one. I, I kind of did a little bit. Zach Wilson I have for this comp, except for, like, I agree, improvising, I think Wilson's better. But similar size, 6'3", 210. Wilson also has a very good arm who makes some wow throws down the field. However, I don't think that arm was, like, incredible. Like, I think last year we were seeing these, like, amazing deep balls from Zach Wilson, these amazing arm angles. We're like, wow, this guy's arm strength is incredible. I don't think it really was. I think it was like Trey Lance and Trevor Lawrence and maybe even Justin Fields had a stronger arm than Zach Wilson, except for Wilson was doing these kinds of throws that looked incredible. And we're like, wow, his arm strength's incredible. Whereas I think he was just really good with his different arm angles. And I think Corral's kind of the same way, where you see these different arm angles and the way he's throwing the ball, and you think the arm is incredible. Really, it's just a good arm, not a great one. Uh, Wilson also, good mobility. And I think Zach Wilson, what he showed at BYU, is what Matt Corral should be as a runner where Zach Wilson would take off when he needed to. Matt Corral needs to be like that. I think Ole Miss kind of, you know, put him in some scary situations this year by really relying on him as a runner. And Wilson struggled mightily adjusting to the NFL this year, which I think Corral might be the same immediately. Like, I think Corral, this could be a rocky rookie season, and and then we'll see later on. Uh, But team fits for him. I got the Panthers, Falcons, Broncos, Washington, maybe the Vikings too. If the Vikings get rid of Kirk Cousins, which there are reports that they are, uh, Come on, dude. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But the Vikings, I think, uh, could be sneaking. I think they should get rid of Kirk Cousins, and I think they might. Um, that's what we got on Matt Corral. Let us know what you think about him. Obviously, we're kind of all over the map with him. You know, two of us have him as QB1. I'm sure Tate does, too. I have him as QB2. Where do you see him? Do you see him as QB1, QB2, QB3? Maybe even way lower than that. Is he a second-round prospect that I've seen a lot of people say, too? What do you think about Matt Corral? What do you think about this quarterback class in general? Comment below what you think about that, and also who you want to see us do next and any other videos that you want to see us do, not only just scouting reports, any other video you guys want to see, we'll look at it and we'll decide, and yep, like, hey, that's a pretty good idea. So please, like, subscribe to the channel, like, subscribe to Google, Apple, Spotify, whatever, follow our Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Boomer Bustrap. follow us on all the social media platforms as well, at Chatter underscore Maxwick, at Nicholas Sports, at Pick and Spreads, and we're on YouTube, anywhere you get your podcasts. And please keep commenting and liking and subscribing below. So for Nick Miriam and Donnie Clemens, I'm Max Chadwick. Have a great night.